to the Cowboy Football Roundup with Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy as we talk Cowboy football and another impressive road win for Oklahoma State. People would see the score coach at 50 to 39 and say, well, it was a shootout. But the reality is, defensively, you only gave up 10 points in the first three quarters. They had two non-offensive touchdowns. I think they only had 184 yards in the first three quarters. What's happened defensively in recent weeks? The, the staff is, uh, is starting to get a good feel for our personnel, in my opinion. But more importantly, we're getting great leadership from, from Whitener and Flowers, Brailford, Ramon, some of the other guys. And they're taking the younger players and they're playing a little bit better than they really should be at this point in their career. And uh, so I think there's credit to go around. Um, people say, well, did they, did they get a chip on their shoulder? Uh, I think so. I think they, um, like a lot of defenses in this league, I think they get tired of people talking about them. Um, in particular here, uh, where we've had so much firepower on offense over the last 10 years, and they, they've bought in. You and I have talked about this the last few weeks. They've practiced really well. They're, uh, their intensity and in individual drills has been good. Uh, I'm guessing that they're, they're watching tape on their own. They're buying into preparing themselves and or their side of the ball, more so than in the past maybe. I just know the product on Saturday has been different, considerably different in the last two or three weeks than it has been eight weeks ago. So uh, I couldn't be more thrilled in that Offensively, we play, we've played good. Uh, the, the general opinion out there maybe is that it's not good, but people don't realize that you get 500 yards and you get 50 points, it's not that bad. Right. Um, but is there room for improvement in certain areas on the offensive side? Sure. But my point is, is that defensively, they've come together as a group. And each week, there's been an interesting challenge. Last week, in my opinion, you and I discussed this, that it was the biggest challenge ver against a quarterback that's had success throwing the ball. And they've rushed the ball. This week will be even more so. So it's been interesting how it's, each week it's gotten to be a different challenge and the, the bar's been raised higher and higher. So um, pleased with the way they're playing. Our tackling has gotten better. Um, and uh, as long as we're doing that and minimizing missed tackles, we gave up a couple big plays. Uh, West Virginia is a team that takes a lot of shots down the field. We knew that going in. I think they took 12 of them. Um, so we have to continue to work to minimize those plays. Uh, but they've rallied together as a group, and, and I'm thrilled for them because here's what we ask them to do, to improve each week. As a football team and as a defense or an offense, special teams, and they've done that. And as a coach, that's all you can ask for. Stay with us. We look at highlights of the Cowboys' win at West Virginia when we return. The Cowboy Football Roundup with Mike Gundy is brought to you by Bud Light. Proud friend of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the visitstillwater.org, shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OG&E power at the speed of life. Hi, I'm Coach Gundy with Oklahoma State University. With approximately 900 Oklahomans waiting for a life-saving transplant, I encourage everyone across the state to make the important decision to be an organ, eye, and tissue donor. So check your driver's license for the Little Red Heart. If it's not there, visit lifeshareok.org and join the registry today. I have the Little Red Heart. Do you? We're back on the Cowboy Football Roundup with Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy. And let's go to Morgantown, West Virginia for highlights of the Cowboys and Mountaineers. A cool sort of wet Saturday and a good start for Justice Hill. 39 yards on the first play. Yeah, first play here. He makes a guy miss. Um, good block. Look at James Washington there. It's awesome. Guy that's uh, uh, probably the leading candidate for national awards and downfield blocking his tail off. Unselfish football. And uh, he took a big hit there. Five took a big hit. 
and uh, dropped the ball. We, we've got to take better care of the ball, but he did take a big hit. Defense comes out, and there's Darian Daniels. I, I should have mentioned him as a leader. He's been, he's been really good for us. Um, now we're getting some pressure on the quarterback and rallying in the flat. That'll be important this week, and it was important against West Virginia. They want to throw it out there in the flat a lot. You've got to be able to come up and make a play. We're back at it now with 27. The freshman uh, touched the ball 41 times in the game. I don't know that we've ever had a freshman touch the ball 41 times. Uh, but we, we came up a little short there. We turned it over. And then they turned it, right, turned it over right back to us. Here's Ramon. Great block there by, uh, by Chad and, and uh, um, number eight, Rodarius. We're getting some, uh, some good play. Ramon's um, making some interceptions and, uh, and giving us a chance. So we're back at it now. We've got to reverse. We got good blocking there by, uh, by uh, 78. Pinned the guy in a little bit. Need to go after him though. Picked up uh, 12 yards down in the red zone in the third down and uh, caught him in blitz and man coverage. And, uh, and Mason saw it, James saw it. Terrific block by number 17, Stoner. Yeah, Stoner. Watch his block right there. Fantastic block. Old school block. You don't see that a lot nowadays. Yeah. It's the way we used to block uh, 100 years ago. <laughs> so uh, they're back out there and run game 25. We, we felt like it was a very effective runner coming into the game. 62 yards on 30 attempts, two yards of carry. Can't ask for anything more from the defense. They get a stop. We're back at it. Third and eight. Um, Mason finds uh, Aitman on the outcut. We're converting. Now we're down into the red zone and uh, couldn't get anything out of that. Uh, back at it on offense. Got another stop. Here's here's. Uh, King again, um, dropped his shoulder, dropped his pads, um, showed some really aggressive running right there. And uh, third down conversion again, Mason hits uh, Lacey, another 12 yard out cut. And uh, <clears throat> Mason hanging in there on the, one of our RPOs, hits Lacey again for another 12 yard gain. So now we're down in the red zone. Um, Why are we able to run the ball more effectively this week, well, consistently? They're, yeah, they're in a lot of pass defense. I mean, they're way back there. They're, they're defending deep balls, and so there's not as many people. And uh, 27 got a nice run there on the cutback play, and he powers in there uh, on, a, on a bob play, fullback lead up front. Well, he's a yard short. And then I think Mason kept this one. Yeah. Yes. And uh, he's been really good on this. Uh, they had a guy there for him, but he's done a nice job of understanding his body and making a little cut and leaning forward. Yeah, he's tied for your team lead in touchdowns. Yeah. He's got seven yeah, he's running done, the ball. Yeah, done a really nice job. So they get down there and get a field goal. Uh, so we're, we're sitting at 13-3, to three and we're 13 minutes to go in the, in the half, and Mason gets a pull and, uh, on an RPO play and hits uh, Washington. 15-yard gain. You know, one thing that's interesting, because I guess the way they were playing defense, you didn't have a completion of more than 27 yards. It's just better take what they give you. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we got another play here. Mason dumps the ball out to Sione. Sione's running hard, taking care of the ball. How much have the Cowboy backs improved the last month? Yeah, they're they're like uh, you know like what what we're getting out of our defense from the fact that um, they're getting some reps. You know, yeah. nice nice job there by Stoner. Stoner was really a good player for us in this game. And uh, come in, got the uh, the field goal attempt, knocked it down. Good job there by Matt. So we're uh, we're back to. A, to a, a two touchdown lead there. Good play again, you know, by Cole, and uh, defeats the block, gets the quarterback sack. Now you got him in in, in a long yardage situation. One of his better games at Oklahoma State. Yeah, he's he's doing really well. Then there's a little guy. They they do that reverse speed sweep stuff with him all the time. I was concerned about that. For the most part, we kept him in check. There's the fumble, and uh, Taj Bakari. Taj Bakari. Yep. You have uh, Brailford on the strip. On the punch the ball up with his right hand, and then Taj does a good job of getting on it, covering it up. Yeah, Bakari had a big goal line tackle in mm -hmm. tech, and then a fumble recovery here. Yeah, he's maturing a little bit. And come back and run the draw. King makes one guy miss, punches it up, takes care of the football, makes a nice run. How is his style different than Justice Hill as a runner? Well, Justice, you know, is really, really shifty. Um, King's a lot like Chris Carson, but shiftier, I okay. think. Um, well, we'll know a lot more. He's really young right now. Uh, they, they, they get back down there and get a touch on us. They, they hit a deep ball right. and got down there, and they were able to score. And so we go in at halftime. Start raining midway through the second quarter. Um, ball got a little wet. Surface got a little wet. Um, but, you know, went in with a, with a decent lead and um, made a few adjustments, got ready for the second half. 
and we'll look at the second half highlights when we come back. We're back on the Cowboy Football Roundup with Oklahoma State head coach Mike Gundy as we look at the second half highlights. West Virginia had some momentum and got the ball going in to start the second half and A.J. Green one of two picks. Yeah, you, you, uh, you get pressure on the quarterback and he let the ball go early and A.J. went up and made a play. There's a, uh, there's a little play pass there from Rudolph to Stoner down in, in there and then uh, Mason did a great job there and, and I mean what a good run. Um, he got to the to the check down guy, um, one, two, three, gets to the third guy, and uh, and then 27 understands where we are on the field and, and finds a way to score. And I'm almost sure that was third down. Yes, it was. Third and goal to six. Yeah, that, that was a big play right there. Great job by 27 getting in the zone. So we get him in third and long again, and we get another pick. Jarrell Morrow coming from the backside off of the uh, vertical route, and uh, we're in business there. Nice ball there by Mason on the on the outcut to James. Third down and four, and uh, five. By this time they cut it down to six. That was a big play. Yeah, it really was. That that was after the uh, that was after the uh, block punt. Yes, and uh, the pick six. That's right. And then we blocked a punt. Yes. Um, and and then uh, here you have Bundage putting pressure on the quarterback, and then AJ gets the interception. I thought he was going to score here. He's rolling pretty good. Almost outran his blockers, it yeah. looked like. <laughs> yeah, we're getting, we're getting good blocks down the field and get the ball way down there. You saw Bundage is the one that instigated this throw, and then A.J. did a good job of going up and going after the ball. He's got good ball security, too. See that? Yes. He's taking care of the football, <clears throat> which is important. Then we caught him in man coverage, and uh, James Washington and, and Mason went up top, got another touch. Second touchdown of the game for James Washington, and again, big after they closed it to six points, you're able to pull away again. No doubt. Yeah, James did a nice job there of not showing the catch coming, not putting his hands up. Then we're we're in a 12-point game, and and uh, we we just I think went for a fourth down, yes, uh, and converted it, and then uh, we hit him on a draw, and really extended the game. Then we're now we're in a prevent defense, and uh, just making him use the the clock and not giving him a big play. Nice job there by 19. He's playing well, isn't he? Yeah, Justin Phillips good job. sure is. Yeah. Nice job there by four, defending the ball. How much did it mean to you to see your young corners hold up so well against such a dangerous passing attack? As you think about the long term. No doubt. Pressure there by Trey Carter. And um, got good coverage back there. They scored here on a, on a fourth down and goal from, I think, the 12. And then we, uh, we got victory out there and were able to secure the win and, and hit the road. So it was a nice win for the team. and. Um, good effort for, from everybody, and uh, uh, I was excited about being able to go up there and win against a team that's been playing really good football. So it was a win for Oklahoma State over a ranked opponent on the road. In fact, the second consecutive win for the Cowboys in Morgantown over West Virginia. Allison Gappa has a conversation with Brad Lundblade when we come back. Back on the Cowboy Football Roundup, Brad Lundblade's a great story. He's Oklahoma State's starting center. He was a walk-on who became a starter very quickly during his Oklahoma State career. Now he's in a unique leadership role. Here's Allison Gappa. A couple years ago, the NCAA changed their governance structure uh, to allow the Power Five conferences to essentially develop their own legislation in certain areas involving uh, student athlete welfare. Um, and so the way it works is that each Power Five conference is allowed three student athlete representatives. Um, so I'm one of the representatives for the Big 12. And uh, basically I work with uh, administrators and, and uh, athletic directors and university presidents from around the country along with the other 14 student-athlete representatives uh, in developing new NCAA legislation and then we actually had the opportunity to go to the NCAA convention in January and actually vote on that legislation. What is um, some of the legislation that uh, was brought up in that spring meeting that you guys um, just talked about and then maybe potentially could vote on in January. Right, so I had the opportunity to attend the NCAA Governance Forum, uh, which was in Chicago at the Big Ten headquarters last spring. Just a, a big open forum, and so we were discussing uh, different legislation uh, that they were trying to draft uh, that would potentially be passed within the next year. One of the biggest things has to do with uh, insurance policies for former student athletes, uh, so they're trying to make it uh, available for former student athletes who have to have surgery 
uh, or, or medical treatment from injuries that occurred while they were playing. Uh, so if five or 10 years from now I needed a surgery because of an injury that I had playing football, they're trying to make it to where an NCAA insurance policy would be able to cover that for former student athletes. And this is still all fairly recent. I mean, four and five years ago is kind of when um, that split off happened. What are some of the biggest legislation that this um, committee has passed? Two of the, probably the most well-known have been uh, allowing walk-ons to eat. Um, I think this has been one of the biggest things. I started out as a walk-on, and so I know that was a really big deal, because uh, before, uh, student athletes that were walk-ons weren't able to eat at training table and uh, you know the schools weren't allowed to provide them any food and so that was uh, a big deal whenever they passed that for the Power Five conferences. Uh, I know for me when I came in that was actually the first year that walk-ons were allowed to eat at training table and so that was a big deal. Uh, and then another thing has been cost of attendance. Uh, you know allowing student athletes to get that extra cost of att attendance check each month uh, to, to help them pay for you know, extra food, gas, rent, whatever it might be, uh, that's, that's been another big thing that's been passed. In terms of networking and building um, relationships with um, some really cool people around you, not only student athletes, also people from different universities. Absolutely, yeah, that's been my favorite part, I think, of, of being a, a representative for the Big 12, is just being able to, to meet student athletes and people from all over the country. Uh, at that Chicago meeting back in the spring, uh, you know, I, I met student athletes from coast to coast, from Miami to USC to Kentucky, um, you know, there, there are people from all over and so it was a really great opportunity just to meet people and, and, and like I said, network and make friends from all over the country and so it's been cool to, to kind of track the other student athletes that I've met and watch their careers as well and uh, I don't know exactly what I want to do whenever I uh, get done playing football here but I think those relationships will go a long way. Students get fired up to win Oklahoma Blood Institute's Bedlam Blood Battle October 30th through November 3rd at the Student Union in KD Plaza, sponsored by the Student Alumni Board. Help the Cowboys win the Bedlam Blood Battle. Text OBI, the number 4, OSU, to 59925 for Bedlam Blood Battle updates and your chance to win an OSU Yeti Cooler. We're back on the Cowboy Football Roundup with Oklahoma State Head Coach Mike Gundy, and next up it's Bedlam, Oklahoma coming to Stillwater, let me ask you this. Do you like this game being played earlier in the schedule, early November, compared to the last game of the season? Or does it matter? Oh, I, I, well, I guess it doesn't matter, but I think it's kind of fun to play in the middle of the year this year um, just for something different. Um, it's, it's a little unusual because most of the time this game has been at the end and there's so much talk circulating about it, but it's, it's very similar. Um, so uh, I don't know. I have to answer that question later on, but I don't have a problem playing it right now. What do you see with Oklahoma that gets your attention? You mentioned it throughout the show, right. the fact that they have the ability offensively to do lots of different things. Well, their quarterback's a fantastic player. You know, they, they love their quarterback. We love ours. Um, they've got uh, a number of guys that have been there in the trenches with them. Uh, they, they've moved the ball and scored lots of points. So... Um, two good teams playing in a game. Um, fairly evenly matched for the most part, um, whoever you talk to, to get an opinion. But uh, should be fun. It'll be fun for the people in the state of Oklahoma, and both teams are having success, and that makes that game more worthwhile. For Coach Gundy and Allison Gappa, I'm Dave Hunsiker. We'll have Bedlam highlights for you next time on the Cowboy Football Roundup. The Cowboy Football Roundup with Mike Gundy is brought to you by Bud Light. Proud friend of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the visitstillwater.org, shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OG&E, power at the speed of life.